lost the words. Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today, the RX43. It's that famous, you can even buy a model of it. This car has won six global rallycrosses, podiumed at the WRC, Gymkhana Grid, Gymkhana 6, Gymkhana 8, and Terracana. From Utah to Dubai, this car has shredded tires for millions and millions of viewers. It's even raced Lewis Hamilton's Formula One car, and it's had a leopard sat in the passenger seat. This car's build is a very interesting one, so let's get into that a bit more. This car was built by Malcolm Wilson, M Sport. Now it started off with him and then got changed drastically. Up there they make a production line on rally cars, especially the Ford factory cars. One of them is the R5, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. The R5 and WRC cars are 1.6 litre engine. Now that just wasn't fast enough for Ken, especially with the rallycross stuff. So they got a two litre Pipo engine, put a huge turbo on it, no restrictors here, just so they could get loads of power to spin this car around. So this car is a whopping 650 brake horsepower. That's double a WRC car. So this car was built and designed for one purpose, and my God, they did it well. All wheel drive, six speed sequential box. Now, naught to 60, 1.8 seconds. I've read the comments and some people have said that this is a replica. I can assure you this is the real deal and you'll see right now. Factory edition triggers broom. So a two litre turbocharged, Garrett turbocharged engine. And you can see from the modifications, I've never seen anything like this. It is obviously built purely for horsepower. It's obvious when you look inside here that a lot of the mods have been because I guess of failures. So when I've done stuff on my buggies, it's all about development and that's the huge cost and it's probably never accounted for. So you break it, fix it, make it stronger, break it, fix it, make it stronger. Like I say, never accounted for in the prices. So we start with these Jubilee clips. I have never seen anything like them. There's four of them. <laughs> the pressure must be immense. We've got, I have never seen so many cable ties in all my life. Cable ties, cable ties, cable ties, cable ties. Nothing's bolted together. It's just cable tied to all the outside bits. Maybe saving weight. Maybe they just run out of money. <laughs> So this is a four cylinder engine, that means four pistons. But it's got two fuel rails. Now obviously that's because they couldn't get enough fuel in. So they've doubled up, so we've got eight injectors. Now that is crazy. So the exterior. Now bearing in mind this is 2015, so that's seven years ago. And back then a lot of cars, even the rally cars were really round edges. This was the first car to have this M Sport body kit, really square. And all these cutouts were for a reason. It was all designed in a wind tunnel even for doing rally cross. So if we look at these arches, <laughs> there really is nothing to this car. Windscreen's all bolted in. Some of them are loose. And these door mirrors, now they're that far back for a reason and I'll get onto that when we get inside. Now this wing, obviously huge, and these uprights have a purpose. Apparently when it's going sideways, they're designed to grab some air and to try and push and project the car forward out of all them slippy rally cross corners. So the radiator and fans are all in the back. Now, it's really interesting why they did that. Now, obviously you'd think forced air at the front, the radiator would be a better place, but apparently with rally cross, because they're so close to each other, you don't get that airflow. So they pull it in the back, so the wind comes over the back and sucks back in, crazy. So these wheels, again, this was bespoke for this car. You can see, even see the number, um, and it was about pulling the air in to call off these brakes. Everything is so special on this car. And these Toyo tires, again, total compound for this car and for this car only. So it's designed to spin, but make that legendary, well-known smoke. So part of the deal was all about keeping this car original, and I was really strict on that it had to look exactly the same. I didn't want any logos, anything taken off this car. So this black on black livery, so it's reflective against the mat. Um, this is the Falcon Feathers, which is obviously about the Dubai one, because that was huge over there. And also it's got eight GoPro mounts, eight. 
that's some serious filming. So we'll start with a the seat. There's a bit of a story behind this. So when Ken did the WRC in Poland, there was a different spec of seat. So Recaro built this seat. So carbon fiber, all to the spec and fit in his uh, body. Now, unbelievably, the seat alone is $25,000. And he had to have two of them. His mate was an expensive trip. I only got the one seat. The other one was just a standard seat. So I should have uh, haggled for a discount. So this centre tunnel is huge, obviously that carries a prop shaft being four wheel drive and this, like again this was a big part of the deal for me. This is actual gold plated and uh, obviously the most well known famous handbrake in the world but yeah like I say, big part of the deal this one. Now in the back this fuel tank, so that's it in there. Now to fill that up you have to have a special uh, intake system which I haven't got. Ken obviously likes sitting in the back because this is so far back. Now apparently there was a couple of reasons for that and that's why we talked about earlier why the mirrors are so far back. He wanted to sit as much in the centre for weight distribution as possible but also, quite scarily, he didn't want to be anywhere near that bomb in the front. <laughs> it's really surreal being sat in here, that's for certain, but like the, the length of this steering column and the position of the seat and the steering wheel, it's obviously extremely bespoke just for him. So enough of me rambling on. Now, I know you've been asking for videos on this. Now, there's a few reasons why we haven't done it. One reason is it's pretty much impossible to start. Like the lengths we've had to go to, to even get it to run. And when I got the car, I had zero information. There was no handbook, no videos. We had no idea even how to power it up. Um, yeah, so that was pretty scary. We found out a lot from Brian. Uh, from Hoonigan since um, and my friend Kieran has got a lot of knowledge of the M Sport cars but yeah you won't see just how hard it is to start this thing. So Nick is our famous mechanic who uh, has to help me with all this stuff because um, it's so intricate and not something we're used to so we have to take the top of the fuel tank off to get any fuel in. Um, it was only designed to hold eight laps of fuel, so it's really, really limited. And apparently it uses about a litre a minute, so I'm not getting to work and back. And it's actually got a way lesser range than the Citroen Ami. So now starting it, um, it's got a battery in it, but that's only really for powering it. Um, it doesn't start the car, and I've even bought a bigger battery. That still didn't start the car. There's a slave lead, so I think what they do each time is they plug it in, use the extra battery to start it, and then take it out. But um, yeah, we've had a mission trying to start this thing. This is the battery, um, extremely expensive and a lot bigger now, still didn't make it go. So now Nick has to put this other battery on. This is a slave lead which we'd usually use but we haven't got the fittings for that. So we're having to uh, bodge it. Can't bodge if it works. So we power up, it takes a few seconds to come onto this Cosworth screen. We've got our extra battery on. Okay, so we're all about building the oil pressure. So we're gonna go engine main, and then we're gonna check this oil pressure. So we're gonna try and start it, push the start button, but without giving it a spark in the ignition. So we're just gonna try and turn it over, build up the oil pressure.
a couple of minutes, switch it off, see you in a minute. So this is the R5, which basically they race now in the WRC rallies. It's a really out of the box car, so um, it's not too technical. You don't need computers. You get in it, press a button, and she's ready to go. It kicks out about 290 brake horsepower. So as we said earlier, it's about half of what Ken's, but that's a lot to do with the turbo. This has got a 32 mil restrictor, which really cuts down the power, but they do it so they're a little bit quieter, a little bit safer, and everybody runs exactly the same brake horsepower. So this is a factory M Sport car, 1.6 turbo, about 1200 kg, but this is a gravel spec. So Ken's was really low, big wheels look great for the, uh, for the tarmac, but this on the gravel, they totally change things. So you can see it's got a 15 inch wheel, a lot smaller, motocross type tires, they're massive and chunky and designed for the gravel. Riga suspension, it's really high up. So it's meant for jumps, bumps, exactly what I like. So six foot two and lots of broken bones. This is not gonna be graceful. So inside here, sequential gearbox, don't need to use the clutch, so that's really, really special. Hydraulic cam bike, love a bit of that, mate. Um, like I say, inside here is very, very simple. There's not a lot of buttons. It's not like a WRC car. It was all about getting to the rallies, reasonably cheap because obviously some of those WRC cars were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds so they made these R5s to sort of bring it back so that more people can get into the the actual big rally stuff so we've also got a spare seat for anybody who is brave enough to get in here with me and uh, I wouldn't bother so we've got horn wiper and trip and we've got a screen on the door so the passenger um, he's busy being scared <laughs> This isn't road legal, it's a rallycross car. We haven't got lights, indicators or any of that stuff, any legal requirements, so it's got no V5, but that's when we call on Chansey. That's Chansey's job, so we're gonna take this different places, um, but unfortunately we can't drive it there, but we are gonna try and get it to places where you can see it, hopefully Goodwood, places like that. Through Instagram, uh, please go check that out also, it's Mark McCann 64 um, people have been asking how much I paid for this. Obviously, it cost them a hell of a lot of money to build this thing. Um, and really, it could have gone to Dubai, it could be in a museum, which would be a massive waste. You know, it probably would never be seen ever again. We're gonna use it, we're gonna have a lot of fun in it. It's just great that this is here in England for me and hopefully you to enjoy. Obviously, this is a dream for me like it would be any other petrol head. Um, I've watched the videos myself time and time again, wishing I was as good as Ken Block's driving. Obviously this car through Ken has done some mind blowing tricks and stunts. I'm never gonna be able to do anything like that, but I'm gonna have a go, but um, thinking about it. So if I can't drive like him yet, at least I can look like him. <laughs> I feel special. <laughs> um, yeah, this was all part of the deal because um, I wanted it to be authentic. I wanted it to have everything which it had in the actual videos. And this was an important part. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Comments, they really do help us. So maybe comment how uh, good or stupid I look. Um, this is our 10th video. So as you can see, we've upped everything a little bit because we're up to 20,000 subs. So uh, thank you for that. See you next time. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,